This is a demonstration of the newest version of Docs Control, version 1280. What we're looking at right now is the status page, which is an overview. The server IP address is the first bit of information, followed by the number of connected devices, in this case modems. There's 130 that are connected, of which 127 are active or otherwise responding. The system is connected to a Cisco. The software has been running for about 2 days and 12 hours, and the this computer server is running Windows 7 Professional. The graphics to the right show the historical information for the number of cable modems, the number of CPE devices, active clients, and the computer CPU usage. The most utilized tab is the Clients tab. It has four sub-tabs, Standard, RF Status, Flap List, and Custom. These are different views of the same set of modems. We're looking at the Standard tab. And it has the HFC MAC address of the modem, the IP address, the number of CPEs connected to that modem, its service or config file, which controls the download and upload speeds, and identifying information of the modem model, as well as its firmware and its capacity. The last two columns indicate uh, the status and online state. Any of these modems can be looked at further by double clicking it, and that will open up a box called Client Insight. Client Insight gives a visual representation of the modem as well as additional information as to its firmware status, configuration, IP address, and lease time. There are several tabs in the Client Insight box. Uh, DHCP will show the history of both the HFC network, which is the cable modem network, as well as the CPE network. Signal is a particularly useful sub-tab as it indicates every single channel that is bonded on both the downstream and the upstream. This is a DOCSIS 3 system, so it is bonding on four channels. The same information is being uh, displayed for the upstream. There are four channels that are currently connected and the frequencies are shown here. Next tab is bandwidth and this is information that's being pulled from the CMTS and the modem to indicate the level activity. It can be looked at on a daily basis, a monthly basis, or lifetime basis. The database has identifying information. In this case, it has a first and last name. Uh, if node was populated, it would show the node number here. Uh, additional fields are available and these are user customizable. The next one is syslog and device logs, which sometimes are helpful for troubleshooting. The next tab is the RF status tab. This has very useful information, particularly when uh, debugging a cable modem problem. Uh, it does show the MAC address of each modem as well as the downstream level at the modem, the upstream level for the modem, the CMTS receive level, the downstream signal to noise ratio, as well as the upstream signal to noise ratio. The uh, next two columns are the correctable and uncorrectable errors, and the last column is the online state. The flap list is a feature that is supported for Cisco CMTSs, and the most important column is the last column, which indicates the number of times a modem is flat. Every single column we've looked at thus far is sortable. So if I were to sort the flaps from highest to lowest, the worst offender is this modem with over 87,000 flaps. This is usually indicative of a modem that has failed or a bad drop or possibly a bad F connector or anything in between. And again, you can flip between any of the sub tabs to identify the particular uh, modem in question. The last tab is a new feature of 1280, which is the custom tab. Each cable operator can select up to 16 columns, which include database columns that identify the name of the customer. So by looking at custom tab, we not only see the modem in question, but we also see the customer's last name and first name and selected technical fields which may be valuable to this particular customer. It's important to note that the fields you're looking at were selected by this particular cable operator, but they are totally user definable and you can select from numerous fields and their ordering. Any of the modems can also be right-clicked to display a drop-down menu. 
and as you can see the options are to copy a MAC address, uh, open up client insight, change the service or config level in order to increase the speed or decrease the speed, SNMP query the device to ensure network compliance, check the device logs, upgrade the firmware on the modem, this is again assuming that you have the firmware available, uh, ping the device, reset or reboot the modem, refresh device information via SNMP on a single line item, or view the CPE devices that are connected to that particular modem. In this case, it is showing a CPE MAC address and a lease time of five days. The next tab we'll be looking at is service profiles. This is a very powerful and easy to use system to create the config files which will control the modem downstream and upstream speeds. As you can see, this is written in a way to visually uh, produce an easy method for looking at what normally would be a very complex and cumbersome set of numbers. You can easily see that the CPE is set to 16 for this particular profile, which is the 10 by four, meaning 10 meg down and four meg up. When you look at the downstream uh, configurators, there's some standard uh, lines that are in the config, but the most important one is the maximum sustained traffic rate, which is uh, set at 10 million or 10 meg. The upstream has, again, some fairly standard parameters, uh, but the main one that's utilized in order to change the rate would be the maximum sustained uh, traffic rate. This does have uh, baseline uh, privacy enabled uh, for security reasons. And of course, uh, network access is set to true, which means that that modem will be able to surf the internet. If that were set to false, that would essentially be a no service config. And we can look at a no service config and you can see the very first line is network access equals false. This particular config file is a 1.1 plus, which is the Doxis mode that it's at. The software does support older version Doxis uh, modems, and in that case, a Doxis 1.0 mode would be utilized. And for telephony applications, both MTA uh, 1.0 and 2.0 are supported. The services can be used as templates, and it's very easy to copy any existing template, rename it, and then create different profiles. In this case, there is a 10 by 4, 20 by 4, 30 by 4, and 40 by 4 uh, DOCSIS 3 configs that are available. Once the service profiles have been created, they would then get assigned to clients. So for instance, this client has a 10 by 4 config. And if this customer wanted to upgrade, for instance, it would be as simple as changing the service and then selecting from the drop-down menu any one of the various service profiles which we just looked at under the service profiles tab. The database tab is the vital component that connects Docs Control's provisioning service with your SQL database or local XML file. It's used to store information that correlates to customers and their devices hardware identifiers. For this example there is the HFC MAC column, the configuration assigned to the modem, the customer's last name, first name, and node, which has not yet been populated. Additional fields are very easy to add in the settings, and some commonly added fields would include the address, the building number, city, phone number for the customer, etc. Each of the columns is completely sortable from lowest to highest or highest to lowest, and also filterable. So if we knew that a customer has the letter K, by simply typing K, it will indicate only those customers that have the K. If it's KR, it'll further whittle it down to these three customers that have those two letters in them. Typically, there will be some test modems inside of a system and simply by typing test, the three test modems immediately pop up. By removing the filter, the entire list will be visible again. In addition, under tools, the database can be exported to Excel very easily.
The next two tabs are the HFC network and CPE network tabs. They both relate to the DHCP server. The HFC network hybrid fiber coax relates to the clients or modems. So this is displaying the IP address, MAC address, and the lease time for each of the modems that are indicated under the model number. The duration is the length of the lease time. This is really just for documentary purposes in case you need to find a lease and get information on it. The two options available are either to ping the device or to add a IP reservation. And sometimes there will be instances where you do want to provide a static address, whether it's public or private, for a particular modem. If there are more than one scope, you can also use the drop-down menu. A typical use would be to have private IPs as the default, but should a customer need a public IP, this would be an opportunity to grab from, say, scope 2, which would be a public range for a particular customer. The CPE network is very similar, and these are the IP addresses that are granted to the CPE devices after the modem. In this instance, there are five day durations, and each of the leases are uh, indicated with the date stamp as to when they were granted. And again, devices can be pinged or an IP reservation can be added. When there is an IP reservation, uh, this icon here on the last column will be lit up to indicate that this is a static IP address. The TFTP tab shows all the file transfers across the TFTP server. So in this instance, there are two modems, one ending in .35 and one ending in .23, which requested a config file, and they both successfully received those files. The TFTP tab is particularly helpful in troubleshooting uh, certain issues that, that may occur with a modem, and this information can be saved to the hard drive for further investigation and research. The next tab is the CMTS tab. This allows you to access the CMTS from directly within Docs Control. This is a Cisco 7246VXR, and so using console simple commands such as show cable modem can be entered to display the information and directly interact with the CMTS. The next tab is Autodocs. Autodocs is a series of automated functions that can be utilized to automate uh, certain tasks. There are four subtabs. The Auto Provisioner allows you to set a particular model of modem and to assign to it a particular service level or config file. So this is particularly helpful if a specific model of modem requires special parameters in its configuration file. The next tab is Auto Provisioner Firmware, and this allows you to set a specific firmware to be assigned to a specific service level. The next one is Auto Firmware, which allows you to assign firmware based on a particular model. And so once that modem comes online, this will trigger a firmware update to that model. The last one is Auto Disconnect, which can be used in conjunction with billing to trigger events such as to shut down service to a modem for a past due bill. In all cases, it is tied to a field in the database, and once a certain threshold has been triggered, the change such as no service will become implemented. Once that condition has been satisfied, so for instance, if there's a past due threshold of $100 and the customer makes the payment and that reflects a zero past due, the modem will revert back to the original status that it had prior to no service. The next tab is the syslog tab, and this will be system messages to the extent there are any. The console tab is a summary of all actions within Docs Control, and this is particularly helpful when troubleshooting problems or trying to determine DHCP errors 
in communicating to a particular device. The entire log can be saved or cleared as needed. Next, let's review the top level functions. Under File, all settings within Docs Control can be exported and then imported. This is particularly helpful when transferring from one server to the other or in the event of some kind of catastrophic failure of hardware. In addition, console information can be saved to a text file as well as the CMTS and syslog. Under program, this is essentially used to stop and start the program, which may be necessary when settings have to be altered. The settings box has a number of tabs in which you can enter and set up the information. Site info is the first tab. The general tab allows you to set the server, IP, the SNMP community string, and a number of other options. The DHCP allows you to set the subnets and ranges for the HFC network, which is for the modems, as well as scope options for each of the subnets. Uh, the DHCP options are available, which allows complete customization of the DHCP server for that particular scope. In addition, any IP reservations which have been set manually will be displayed under this box. The CPE network has the same setup and the ability to control DHCP options and any IP reservations. IP exclusions are also possible if you want to preserve certain IPs and not allow them to be assigned. In all instances, more than one scope can easily be added. And in this case, two scopes are available for the CPE network. The next tab is the database tab. And this allows you to select between using services, which is preferred, or the classical method of assigning config files, which is the TFTP directory method. In addition, when the program is not running, you can go into the database and set and create fields such as customer name, address, phone number, etc. There is an option as well to use an external database such as a MySQL server or Microsoft SQL server. The next tab is the TFTP tab and this allows you to set the home directory. In addition to this, an external server can always be utilized for TFTP. The next tab is the CMTS tab and this is basically where you set the IP address of the CMTS including the login and password and enable password information. The integrated MIB is a powerful function that allows you to import MIB files particularly for cable modems in order to extract certain OIDs and be able to have advanced functionality in controlling the modems. The MTA tab is utilized whenever packet cable or SIP service is being utilized to provide telephony. The next high level uh, tab is the view and this allows you complete control as to which of the sub tabs are visible or not. Under tools, there are a number of utilities, including a subnet calculator, the ability to look up IP addresses and active client history. This is a graph of the number of active clients that were responsive to ping. We see a dip here and we can drill down by looking at the daily. And what we see is a significant outage that occurred. It looks like this outage occurred right around 12 p.m and there were only 39 active devices. It looks like it was resolved. Also under tools, you may reset any network device by IP address or query uh, a device. Uh, helpful feature is to be able to export the database to Excel and bandwidth monitor is a new feature that will accumulate information by month and by modem, MAC address. This will indicate the total amount of downloaded and uploaded traffic. So this can be sorted in order to determine the customers that have been utilizing the most amount of traffic. Additional features are always being added into Docs Control as the development is based on continuous improvement and feedback from customers, which is highly appreciated. Thank you very much for your time.